How about going live right about now, little Missy? That works. We can go live right about now. Really? Really, really? Really, really. Okay. Really, really. And I just reeled in a fish in the red Ooh. pill. Uh-huh. Welcome to the dark table <laughs> where fishing is a responsibility. Where all where all dork things matter. Absolutely. Yeah. I said Lou. Yeah. Anyway, I wasn't going to do a dork table today. I canceled because I couldn't get a hold of my co-hostage, Miss Mary. And at the last possible five minutes, she pops up. Had a little bit of wire trouble on the old interweb. So now we're yeah, together. My, my interwebs have been wonky anyway. Of course, you know, rural <laughs> <Yeah>. internet. <laughs> rural. I got booted yesterday, and oh. I went, well, fine. You're going to boot me off the internet. I'll just go do something else. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and throw some vegetables, Dan. Uh, anyway, well, let's say the haze. Let's say thanks to Grimmer for all his patience and help that he puts out here for us crazy radio people. And uh, you Fine. you want to do the bots and bodies and the Mary style that only you seem to have? Mm-hmm. Why, certainly. Right up top, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle. Beetle. Hey, Beetle. Beetle. Is Pippi in your lap? Uh-oh. Just curious. Hey, wait a minute. I also see Grimner, the RLM god, Grimner. don't you know? Closely followed by Moose Quail. Moose Quail is having a garage sale. Are you selling your garage or are you just selling shit out of the garage? Uh-huh. You know, you know that it's always your stuff is shit and my stuff is stuff. Mm-hmm. That's the way it always works. Moving along. Mm-hmm. Hey, Anti, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also see the Asmodeus Asmo is in the mm-hmm. chitty chat as well as Chalcedony, and we got some echelon going on as well. Mm-hmm. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is also in the house, as well as Jay Dread. Hey, Hansel. Mm. Got some Oysterbrow going on. That's the woodman, for those of you that don't know. Mm. Also got a Ponder Gander and some Poopster. I, I don't have no Poopster. I already... Moving along. <laughs> got some Prince, too. Hey, Prince. Are you wearing purple? Everybody's got a Poopster. Kate. Well, everybody has a poop, sir. It's just that I don't need to use mine right now. <laughs> it's early. Yes, that's true. The lovely Miss Kate from Florida is also here, as well as Rob Wikes. He's still getting settled in, and I understand how that works. Mm. I also see Rome's is here. When mm. in Rome, as Rome does. Mm-hmm. Got some Vanna White going on. Hey, Vanna. Hey, Vanna. Tell us. Tell, turn some letters for us. Got Vinny in here, too. Ooh, Grimmy is now a Grim Nerd. Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> Vinny is Grim uh, Nerd? Wow. Vinny is, Vinny is just Vinny. Wow. He's just, he's just me. That's just all you can say. Mm. We also got a Weather Dorks in the house. Hey, Weather Dork, how you doing? Give me, give me some more. Oh, hey, Weather Dork is giving me warmer weather. It's supposed <laughs> to be 71 today. Wow. Woohoo! So I'm going to go out and rake some leaves uh, and other stuff. That my trees decided to just leaf all over the place. Oh, yeah. They do that. Uh, let's see. Got some phantom in the house. <gasps> it's the phantom. Mm. Egad. Mm. <laughs> CC66 is also here as well as Chascura. <laughs> cycles, the lovely cycles. Your better half. Uh, my we only half. Oh, you're only half. Yeah. Need more bran? <laughs> uh, Thanks, Grim. Um, wait a minute. We also got some cyborgian noodles going on. May you be touched by the cyborgian noodles. The Dork Cakes is here. Hey, Cakes. How you doing? I know. I just yelled in your ear. Yeah, you um, always do that. I know I do. That's why uh, I'm prepared for it now. Oh, you are? Yeah, cool. but I have my brain surgery scheduled for Tuesday. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apparently, Rome's changed his name to Permanently Dirty Toilet. Ew. Yeah. Ew. Whatever. Ew. Okay. Thanks for that update, duh. E-Man is also here as well as Flash Somebody, the hostess with the most dorkularness. Mm. We also got some Frumpy in the chat as well as yours truly. Gromit is here. I am Lone Frog. Ribbit. 
Ribbit. You know the difference between a, a frog and a horny toad, don't you? Twenty-seven frog fifty. Frog says ribbit, ribbit, and rub horny it, toad says rubbit, rubbit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Reruns. <laughs> JJ's nine nine is here, as well as Mister Snick. Mr. Got some Snick. real Donnie Woo, not the Memorex one, Ooh, the real one. Cool. Sock puppet. Sock puppet. Yeah, it's sock. Some Smataz is also here, as well as the holiest Roger ever. Say it ain't and so. to round out the crew, the z mm-hmm. So there you go. Dang, in, in five minutes. Cha-cha, fucking cha, little missy. You're getting there. I know. I'm gonna I name, just zippity doo right through that, didn't I? I'm going to name my next child after you, even if it's a girl. Even if it's a girl? Sweet. You're welcome. Oh, I guess... I'm looking in the chat, and Grim's calling someone a dirty damn hippie. I think he's talking to Rome. I don't really <laughs> care. Well, yeah, sometimes people say things for, you know, the uh, effect it will give them sometimes. That's uh-huh. my personal opinion on that. Eh, I don't know. Oh, hey, Dork Cake says he's as graceful as a camel in heat. Mm. I have no idea what that image is. I mm. don't want it in my head. Well, you read it. Now what are you going to I do? I know, but I I can't even I can't even get Nah, I just so, can't go there. What are the hot dork topics of the modern day? Do you know? Do you keep up with the rest of this crazy fucked up world to even know what's going on out there? Oh, I kind of sort of keep up with it. Right now there's dun 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 going mm. on in DC apparently. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Uh, That's what everybody on Twitter is saying at what, least. What does that mean? Um I don't I don't know. They say that, that they're all running scared. <laughs> Who is they? And there's I don't know. Where are they gonna they, run? Them. Those out. people over there, them other ones. The other ones. Yeah, I've been reading about them all my whole life. Hmm. Yeah, it's them them other people, you know, they always have you know, like them other those blondes over there, they have more fun. Bullshit. Bullshit. Well, they just know. brag about it more. So are you going to get all political and try to stop Trump from becoming the, you know, getting the second term? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, you know, I really don't. I really don't. Yeah. Nah, what for? No. You know, even if he didn't, if he didn't get reelected, it's not going to change anything. I know why people don't understand the basic simplicity of an illegal corporation operating as an operating as a government in the world eye because it's not if it's anything it's a company it's not a freaking government protecting people from anything it's an invader taking up as much of the fucking world as it can something well, yeah. else well and see yesterday before i went to my uncle tommy's i got to thinking and i thought and this little thought popped into my head. You know, everybody says, well, the government is so bad, and the government is this, and the government is that. And what popped into my wee little brain was, the government ain't shit. The government is a thing. The government is a tool. It is a fiction. Mm-hmm. There are people who wander around in the name of, or under the color of, the government, this collective fiction or mass hypnosis kind of thing, <laughs> and they do things, you know, most of those things are e- either one of those things where you do the little doggy tilt your head and look at them like, dude, seriously, whatever you're on, you need to share with the rest of the class. Or you want to go up to them and just smack them like an old TV set to get the fuzzy out of their head because it's like, dude, seriously. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Brain farts are you, but you know government is a, it's just a thi- it's a thing it is a thing it is a creation of man, whoever created it, it was a really bad idea, but they sold it anyway, kind of like a lot of things on well, t v anymore but what wait a, what there's ama- more what amazes me about this whole thing is most of what I've read, learned, and been taught over my lifetime doesn't even apply to me government it it has nothing to do with me at all yeah well it involves a lot of other people somehow magically i don't they're crazy as far as i can tell 
because I agree with the fiction thing. I mean, where is government? When you look around, you might say, well, look at the guy in the uniform. No, that's not government. <laughs> so, we're, we're being screwed with this language so badly that we can't even tell people that, you know what? We're being really screwed with this language. And you go, what's wrong with you? Are, are you a conspiracy nut? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I got called one of those yesterday, too. A tinfoil hatter. By who? And I said, I'll have you know, I have a different colored tinfoil hat for every day of the week. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Am, but wh- well, I am fashion conscious, you know. No, don't say that. Really? I am. Yeah. I am conscious of what fashion is, uh, and I usually walk the other way. Oh, okay. <laughs> you had me sweating My- there, little missy. Uh, I'm telling no. you. My children told me years ago, Mom, you didn't just step off the fashion train. They threw you off. Yeah. And I said, yeah, but I didn't get any bumps or bruises, so. Well, you could have. That's all good. You should have. Yeah, but if you, you look at where the fashion train has gone lately, oh, I, I'm really glad I got thrown off of it. I, I see things on minds that make my eyes bleed. I mean, uh-huh. as far as men go. Well, I guess they can call them men. No, I'm kind of curious about how they come to that decision. Well, they come to that decision because they have dangly bits between their legs, but that's pretty much the only qualifier have on you, that one. Ha, have you seen any of that shit on the uh, on the, whatever uh, online service you use? It's all the same shit. You're going to see it one way or the other. You know what I mean? Where if uh-huh. you're online, they're going to put it in your face somehow. One way or another way. There you go. We can't win. We're kind of like being held hostage against our will. Well, some of us, not all of us. I think there's yeah. a few folk that get their rocks off that way. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Well, are you I one should... of those few folks that gets your rocks off that way? <laughs> no. No. Why not? I'm just weird. Well, do you sit back at night and when you look over your day, if you ever do, and just silently laugh to yourself because it's too hard to explain? <laughs> the, yeah. This thing and that we do. Usually, when I do that, the farmer looks at me and goes, What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, <laughs> I know that look. <laughs> But, and then I laugh even harder, and, and then he really gets nervous, and then I say, it's okay, honey, I love you. <laughs> well, I just, I hear all this insane shit about you know, the shape the world is in. And, oh, what the politicians are doing. No, they're, they're not doing anything. I mean, you're doing it, whoever you may be. It's not real to me, whatever you're doing, it's real to you. We can't seem to get that message out there to a Enough people that really understand what the hell it means. You know, it's like that um, being responsible for yourself, in my opinion, is a mental state. It's not a physical thing you do. It's something you, yeah. you decide, you know, and then if you take care of yourself and you do a little bit of reading, you can actually survive all the poison and shit these fucking monkeys are throwing at us. Oh, yeah. And, you know, taking personal responsibility, it's kind of tough at first. You know, it's kind of like when you when you start working your way uphill or something. <laughs> but once you catch your stride, it really does start getting easier. And then you get over that hump. And then it's like, wee-hoo, look at this ride. I get to go down now. So. And you said yeah. hump. <laughs> yes, I did. I said hump. <laughs> <laughs> telling you. Hey, I never said this was an exceptionally intelligent platform. I just said it was a platform. <laughs> Be careful. You're standing well, on something soft. And when I retweeted it, I yeah. said, solving all of the problems of the world, one dorky opinion at a time. Well, I, I don't know that. See, I, that's the point I'm truly, truly trying to get to, is this illusion of the world has problems. They need that in order for the voter to feel they're necessary, or why would they be there? And all they do is cause problems. Good yeah. God. It's like that Greta kid. If anybody in their right mind thinks that that kid wasn't put there on purpose by somebody with lots and lots of dough, 
Well, they're kind of lying to themselves, in my opinion. And yet, you know, there's an awful lot of people in this world just because the indoctrination has been so steady for so many, probably centuries, mm. that, you know, a lot of people really don't realize that they're lying to themselves. They honestly believe, mm. which is why there's a little lie inside <laughs> every belief. They the honestly believe the bullshit they're spewing. Well, what's the... It's like, dude, seriously, wipe your mouth with toilet paper because you got a little bit of that on the corner. Okay, what's the benefit of going along? You've done it, so I, I would assume you have a little bit of knowledge in this particular direction. What is the and advantage you... to going along with these bullshit stories that you hear? Is there ever a point, like with yourself, you came to the decision, no, that's not true. After a whole lifetime of being convinced it's true, and then one day some little light bulb pops up in your head and you go, no, there's no way that could have been, that, that's not even possible. And then you tell somebody else and you're a nut job for the rest of your life because you don't believe the official narrative. And, you know, I've always been a little on the mm. off-kilter side. I know that shocks you. <gasps> a little. <laughs> like a French bread little. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yeah. Yeah. I've always been a little on the different side. Yeah and, yeah. and I've pretty much embraced that. But, you know, for all those years that I went along or mm. tried to play along. Yeah, yeah. Try, yeah. Tried to make it better. Yeah. It was, I think my real defining point was getting on city council. And I, honest <laughs> to God, yeah. think that is probably the best learning experience anyone could ever have is to actually get on something like that, whether it's a, a county board or a city board or whatever, something small and local. Mm. Man, oh, man, oh, man, will that open your <laughs> eyes to how, oh, yeah. how the shit really hits the fan. It's the difference between being a salesman and being a customer. Yeah. Okay, a salesman is not there to help you at all. He is there to make money. And they'll yes. tell you, as a salesman, I have known this for many days. Man, not, there's nothing we won't say. Nothing. We'll fix every problem you got. This will make childbirth a pleasure. You know, whatever it takes. And it's that's the world we're in. <laughs> it's acceptable. And you know that whole "this will make childbirth a pleasure." They tried that crap on me uh, when huh. I was. Oops. Both of my girls, they said, oh, well, we can we can do this, whatever. It basically put a needle up my spine. No. Like, no. No. Ouch. No. Really? Yeah. <sighs> and I, yeah. I have no Ooh. idea. I don't remember what they call it, but it's like. An epidural. Like, you guys know. Oh, there you go. I've read about and I said, it. I don't like needles. Ah, so, you don't know yeah. what you're missing, you big baby. It, Okay, the only needles that I even remotely come close to liking yeah. are knitting needles yeah. uh -huh. and sewing needles. Baker, but Baker. sewing needles tend to pierce my skin. And knitting <laughs> needles, if I'm working with something like I am right now with number three knitting needles, they got very sharp points. And so my fingers get kind of ouchy after a while. Oh. But... Huh. I don't, yeah. Can't you, and like, you, you, uh, all right, remember those little rubber things you used to put on your fingers if you had a lot of counting to do with paperwork? Oh, the little finger cots? Yeah, wouldn't yeah, something like, little, like that. It's a condom for your fingertips? Yeah, wouldn't something like that work for what you were just describing? Not necessarily, oh, okay. because you got to have the, the uh, sewing. Oh, you, know, you got to fill the, what you're the doing. The thread's got to, yeah. Yeah, I get and that. And it's got to yeah. be able to move smoothly. Because I, I actually thought about that. And yeah. then I thought, I wonder if maybe if I were to just put a fingertip bandage <laughs> on my finger. <laughs> Great minds sit, just sit, think of sick shit the same way, I suppose. What can yeah. I tell you, Mary? Wow, did I when you know. woke up this morning, did you have any idea you were going to be compared to me in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Ooh, mm, talk about no. scary, huh? Yeah. Ooh, Moosey had a C-section. Ow. My, my oldest daughter had to have that with all three of her kids. 
Because they, they say that you cannot have them natural after you've had one C-section. Yeah. And although I do know people that have, you know, had to have C-section because little one was was breech and cord was wrapped around. Which yeah. Is not what my oldest grandchild was. Boy, that's just wrong. So many ways. But, uh, the hospital said that if, if you want to, you know, if you want to... Um, go natural childbirth and it's considered a high risk pregnancy. Yeah, that's a con and job. You know that, right? It it is basically a con job yeah. and then the insurance companies say, "Well, we won't pay for it." Mm. You know, so yeah. Well, so she wound up having all three of them cesarean. I, I don't particularly have any, you know, like experience in the birth delivery given game, but I have spoken to quite a few nurses over my lifetime. About stuff like that, because I was curious what they thought. And one of the biggest things that the nurses I've spoken to agreed with is that these fucking doctors don't know a damn thing. They don't know what they're doing. They're just they're they're throwing a male version of a female process, and people are just uh, it's like voting. So and so said the vote was this, so we have to do that. So they write a law. Eh, now it's a code or a statute, you know, they're not necessarily a law, but something that if you don't follow, the insurance isn't going to pay. <laughs> and, all, yeah. and all these fucking traps are set so that you can't win. And people well, will and not accept all of these feeder industries based around all of this other crap. So, you know, and, and they talk you into doing the feeder industry like insurance company. Talk about freaking flim flam job. <laughs> if people stop to think about if they just saved that money that they pay in insurance premium, odds are they could, because that's what I did with mm. a lot of my, of course, I've been blessed. I understand this, but Man, you know, instead of paying for like dental insurance or all this other fun crap, if you just save that premium that they're going to charge you, mm -hmm. and then in the end, when you actually have to have the procedure done, you got to cough up most of it anyway. Yeah. Just save that money back, and then that way you can cover it yourself and not have to deal with the freaking insurance companies. Yeah, if well, you give me two hundred dollars today, I may pay you back next Thursday. That's kind of the way they play that game. Well, I think regulation has pretty much put us in, in the corner we're in. And like I complain about these voters, they, they support these lying pricks in suits and ties with you know businesses and jobs and all this shit. And nothing ever comes from it except more, uh, more tape and, and rope and barbed wire to keep you tied down. You can't do anything without permission anymore. And then when you ask for your permission, they want money. So, mm. mm -hmm. all okay, right. So when you break down what is a license to a voter, I, I need a voter to argue with, but I don't want to do that really live on the radio. But uh, the argument would be, well, you need the license to operate a vehicle, for example, right? Why? Do this you is, not know how to turn the vehicle on and off? Do you not know how to steer it? Do you not know how the accelerator and the brake pedal works? Okay, but why do you require a license to drive, which is the wrong word, but to drive a motor vehicle on a public road? There's my – why? Because that everybody is, else is doing it, stupid. You'll well, stand out. Well, that is – because you know what? Uh, in Kansas, you hmm. weren't – I don't remember when the driver's license actually went into effect, but I do know that um, insurance, once insurance went into effect, um, you had to carry liability insurance. I think it was in the late 70s that you had to start carrying liability insurance or you could be ticketed for not having, which, you know, they're, you know, revenue generator. But it wasn't, you know, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, baby, didn't breathe, breathe. I know, that snuck up. You didn't necessarily have to have your driver's license. You know, if you didn't screw up, it was no big deal. Exactly. But then the insurance company got involved, mm -hmm. and the state decided, man, they can make money, and we can make money, because then the state created another board, you know, the insurance board. 
And so now you have an insurance board that's part of the state that's telling the insurance companies what they can and cannot do. And then it's just like this vicious, all of these tentacles start just jumping off. It's like, send, you know, bindweed sending out shoots all over the place. That's pretty much what all this crap is. It's just a noxious weed mm -hmm. that just keeps sending shoots out and popping up all over the place. Where is all the support for the 10 million requirements that my, my previous home demands from the public to uh, exist as an English-speaking American? Because I don't see the same shit being done to people that don't. They call them burners, refugees, illegal aliens, and such. And uh, fuck, how do you break a bullshit law like that, immigration? What a crack of shit. I don't know. I, I saw something earlier today about, what was it, uh, Mayor Blasio or whatever the hell his name is in New From York. Mary, yeah, in New York? Okay. Yeah, we need more laws because subway abusive people. Right. And yeah, it's like, yeah. as if you don't have enough laws already, I'm sure there's a law somewhere right. that covers that. Everything. Yeah, every every time you, fucking Every thing. time you create a law, you create more criminals. It's mm -hmm. just logic. Well, not only that, but that is, see, it's like a secret that you can tell people right to their face. And they don't have a clue what you're talking about. So if you're driving a car on the road to not be a victim of the law enforcement, you must purchase a protection card from said organization, right? DMV. True. Well, the DMV. Not just the protection card, but you also get the protection magic plate that you put. And depending on the state, either on just the back or on the front and the back. Okay, but DMV and I was you kind of got me off. Uh, they're not connected well, to the they're not connected to the enforcement division of that particular driving extravaganza. Okay, oh, now really? Yeah, Have you ever had to stand in line at the DMV? Yeah, <laughs> back in talk about torture. Um, no, when I was young, it was like it wasn't that bad. Nineteen seventy six was kind of easy. Plus, I was part of the school thing. I don't know. In fact, the only reason I got points shaved off my driving test is because I was driving a fucked up old car. And I wasn't sure it was going to start, so I left it running. And the, uh -huh. damn, the damn instructor gave me three points off for not starting the fucking car in front of him. Because, like you oh. just said, well, how could you... I, 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 I. Well, because they cannot give you a perfect score. And you know why they can't do that? Because nobody's perfect. That's uh, actually the response I got from someone one time. I got oh, one point geez. taken off. See? Yeah, they always got to pull some shitty little. But the enforcement division of our entertainment system is not directly connected to the Department of Motor Vehicles. There is no, there's a separation there. You know, I had a friend, well, I had a friend look for me when I, in the 80s. I had been disappeared for like five years. Nobody knew where I was. Well, there was a person in Whittier where I'm from, L.A., and uh, she had a friend at the Department of Motor Vehicles, and they were really desperate to find me. My mom was looking this, that, and the other. Uh, anyway, so she had gotten a hold of her friend and got my freaking phone number and address where I was living in California, and I wasn't even on DMV records anymore. So how my name came up and my address is beyond me, but they found me. And I would have complained, but it was to get a hold of my mom. And, uh, <laughs> it's a terrible story. But uh, she thought I had been murdered and for, like, years. Oh. Right. I didn't know this. So I call. And they're in England. I got this number. Call them up. So I call. And she's, like, crying. This can't be my son. My son got killed years ago. I said, what? Who the hell have you been talking to? <laughs> oh, wait. This is you, isn't it? <laughs> But wow. I told you, I've lived a very weird life with lots of gaps where there was no connection to family. None. Didn't care for it. You know, you know. Circumstances will, man, that's what I mean. You can plan your life all you please, but something outside of your understanding can come in any time and just change your whole life. And you're doing something different. And, uh, yeah. Well, 
people are stuck on the stability and financial security and all these fucking illusions that are so fucked up and make believe that they believe them. It's like uh, religion. Uh, there's another bad topic, but I do I do listen to Clint Richardson from UCY. Got turned on to them by uh, Vinny actually, and he mm-hmm. does his show with Shali Lama in the past. He did a show, and then he, for a while he got off the radio. He says, ah, "I'm going to give up the radio. I'm going to write a book." And then recently, last month, September or so, him and uh, Shali and, and uh, Clint got together in Utah and did a few live shows over like a four week period. Mm-hmm. And well, again, my partner Vinny always assumes the worst of me for some reason. And we got into a disagreement about, well, hey, this isn't a new show. You're just, because he he just assumes things without really looking closely sometimes. I do the same fucking thing, Vinny, at HSU. <laughs> I'm just more selective about who I do it to. Because we, we definitely have on the reallibertymedia.com and anywhere else where they speak English, a failure to communicate in a meaningful fashion that goes anywhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, people are so stuck on their fucking opinions. They don't even look up what a, what does an, an opinion mean. What is an opinion? So one day I got curious and I looked up what an opinion was. And it says, it's how you feel about shit. What you think about shit. Not dependent on any fact or you know, proof. It's just how you feel. There you go. There's your opinion. That's why it's not worth anything. Because nobody else has that opinion except you. And we're all always looking for somebody to agree with us. Good Lord. Man, if you don't like the same TV show that everybody else likes, there's something wrong with you. You don't like this. I mean, come on. It's stupid. There is no exception for the individual anymore. In any area that we live in, it's just sad. And I'm complaining for the dorks that don't complain. <laughs> There's four of them. Okay. One's in Texas, one's in Florida, one's in Ohio, and the other one is on an island near Hawaii. Never complain. Hmm. Of course, they are deaf mutes, but that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> you can Excuse still me. flip yeah. people off and sign language, I suppose. Anyway, that was a shitty joke that went south. But I was uh, looking up the Kansas driver's license went into effect, and it didn't bring me anything uh, specific on it. Just a lot of crap about Department of Revenue. <laughs> yeah. Kansas yeah. Department of Revenue. Oh, Depart- I mean, we are living amongst people that understand. Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. They got educations. They got lives. They got houses and cars and children. And they run around just in the fucking dark about every goddamn thing that matters. And it is very upsetting to me, to say the least. Can't help well, anyone. It's just hopeless. We're we're in this little pocket, this little mental pocket, like Grimmer and Rob Works, a couple of people I know. On the RLM, mental pancakes, maybe moose girls sometimes. It depends on her mood. But to be uh, individual and different and live with it, it's a fucking hard job. I have a hard time. I have to block a lot of people on uh, chat rooms because all we ever do is fucking argue and disagree. I got hands for that. I don't need anybody else to argue with. And Vinny. But me and Vinny, I think we've elevated to a... A point where once the yelling stops, what are we talking about? You know, but you got to get through this anger thing, some of us. Not all of us, right? Me and Vinny mm-hmm. seem to be very uh, particular about how other people listen to what we say. But it's the same thing they're saying, just in a different way. And all we ever see is the differences. Don't never connect in the middle. It's very disappointing. And I think that's from training you know we've and a lot of people don't realize that that's what they're doing is they're training their kids to only see the difference just like they're training their kids to only recognize the bad shit 
Mm. You know, instead of going, hey, Mm. you did good there. Or, wow, that's really (laughs) awesome. You know, instead of doing that, they're going, man, you fucked up. You missed a spot. You know. Mm. (sighs) Well, you know, I seen this meme a couple of weeks ago of these little boys, six years old in school, kindergarten, first grade, something like that. One Mm -hmm. is black. The other is white. And they had their heads haircut shaved the same way to fool the teacher into not notice, not being able to figure out which one she was seeing. This is how colorblind children are. Yeah. They don't know. They got no idea. You have to teach us this shit. Because if, oh, you, yeah. if you just let people be what they're going to be, they're happy and they do fun stuff. And But that's not the way the world works no more. What it does is it grabs a hold of you because you're an asset on a fucking ledger sheet and it yeah. squeezes you for every fucking nickel it can get for the entirety of your existence in this fucking fiction that isn't even real. Well, that's what fiction definition of fiction is. But, you yeah. know, you were talking about those two little ones and my granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about the olden days because they were playing mommy's um, I pulled it out of the attic at their old Atari system that still worked and uh, took it down for the grandkids to play on. And they were like, wow, mommy played with this. This is so cool and having fun. And then she asked me about some stuff when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, when I was little, we didn't have color TV. TV was in black and white. And she's kind of looked at me weird. And, mm-hmm. and I said, what's the matter? And she said, there was no color on the TV, and I said <laughs> Not no. Until 1967. And then she said, so was there color in the world? <laughs> she really did not. I mean, she how old? was just. How old? She's like six or seven. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're still trying to figure out what hole you're peeing out of at that age. I don't know what's going on. And I on. was, you know, I I tried not to laugh, but I did giggle <laughs> a little bit, and I said, no, honey, there was color in the world, but. When you watched it on TV, there was no color. Now, but we could, you know, as kids, do you remember we didn't being that really age? Really notice that until we got a color TV, and then the colors were wrong. But do you remember we that? We automatically filled in the color with our minds. Okay, I didn't bother with. Do you remember those days though in your mind still? Yeah. Six, seven, eight years old, because most of that's faded for me. Oh yeah. I can remember that stuff, and wow. I, I really do. I remember da- the first. I remember us getting our first TV, and then I remember Dad bringing home this film that you could put over the TV, and it made the TV color. And all of us kids were sitting around. We were so excited, and we were waiting for him to turn on Gunsmoke because Dad liked Gunsmoke. Oh yeah, Gunsmoke. Yeah. And Festus. we were waiting, and everybody in Gunsmoke was red because the <laughs> film that you put on the TV was red. Wow. And so everybody was red. And we were like, ooh, ah, ooh. And then he took the film off, and the, the next time we watched it, because he was pissed, because, well, it just made everybody red. And so he took it off. The next time we watched Gunsmoke, it was like, you know, right back to, we just filled in just because we know what color people are from observing around us and what color clothes is. So we just filled in the colors in our mind. And then when we did get a color TV, it's like, that's not what I, that that doesn't look right. You know, what, I remember having a hard time adjusting to what the colors were on the TV because in my mind, that's not the color that they were. But, yeah, I remember a lot of that stuff from from being a kid. And wow. And I know I've I've always had a very very vivid imagination and that's why I think when people post stuff and I go oh no 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 don't put that seed in my brain because it it will wait, work itself wait, out wait, so how I do get a picture you, how do you define that you've got a, a creative side or I mean what apparently I'm very left you said imaginative eh, I don't know about all that left brain right brain crap could be just more shit to feed us well, no, not left brain, right brain. I'm right brain because left brain is the analyt- analytical and logical side. What if they're lying? The what follower. if it's the other way around and we're being lied to? Well, and they could be lying. They could be. I don't know. Maybe it's part of me being left-handed. I don't know. But the right side of my brain is supposedly more dominant. Oh, okay. Although it's... I don't have a dominant eye. 
Every time I go to the eye doctor, you do not have a no, dominant do. eye. That is so weird. Wow. The only part of me that's not that's the set that's not dominant is my balls and my ears. Everything else seems to <laughs> work yeah, independently well. of the other stuff. My eyes are odd, my yeah, because I got better vision out of one eye than the other. Well, and I do have better vision out of one eye than the other, but they do this kind of test to see, you know, if I don't know, but it's supposed to pull the other eye in, and they. <laughs> And I don't have a dominant eye. Basically, okay. whenever they do that test, oh, my eyes yeah. cross. You, uh, so read two years before the mast, and, and they, they had a pretty nifty. It, it's about uh, being out on the ocean in sailing boats, and uh, they had some pretty interesting explanations for how they fixed this guy's eyesight. They put a patch over his eye to strengthen uh-huh. the, the weak eye, so his uh-huh. good eye was covered. And he was forced to look at his other his weak eye. But see, I had I had some classmates like that. A lot yeah. of the older the older methods of uh, repairing problems that we had physically have all been replaced with pharmaceuticals. Oh yeah, take a pill. Boy, you know, instead of actually making the body work to fix itself, yeah. here, take a pill. I I still got Netflix and the Alan Arkin and uh, what's his name, Michael Douglas did a, a sitcom together about some Hollywood guys, and in the the whole point of the whole fucking story in the long run is they're pushing pills on old guys, you know, older than me guys, to mm-hmm. be able to have sex. So yeah. if the, as long as you if you get un, inundated and pounded about you need this you need this you need this the minute your weakness comes up and you don't perform whatever act you're trying to perform then you're gonna go find a drug to enhance your weakness uh, right well yeah I'm not I was cut that way for a while but ooh once I saw the truth of it all I went nah this is insane how can you how were we indoctrinated into this fucking nightmare of modern medicine? It's so barbaric. It was a very slow process. But it's barbaric. They're more barbaric yeah. now. Back in the hundreds of years ago, here, eat this, and you're you're so and so, with blah blah blah. Well, and here we are today. Take five of these every four hours until you're out of money. <laughs> until your insurance won't I'm- pay for it. I wonder if maybe all of that came in, you know, with the projection, uh, because that's basically what they're doing is they're projecting. They're projecting their weak qualities onto something that actually works and got people to actually believe the projection as opposed to actual truth. Maybe maybe a lot of that came in when they, you know, came up with the, the video camera or the, you know, the original cameras and and projectors and projector screens and well, I, don't I believe know. I believe there's two worlds: technology. There's the world that we know about, and there's the other one where we don't know shit about. And they dazzle and bullshit us with, "Oh, we're going to the moon. Look at this spaceship going on. Blah, 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 blah. We're we're going to Mars." Blah, 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 blah. And the reality yeah. is, they're figuring out a way to recreate us without us in laboratories all over the fucking planet. They're trying to. They're trying to replace us with something cheaper that's more cost effective. Well, that's the whole AI thing. That well, and, and they're that's a part there. of it. They're ah. getting ah. that. They're blowing that out of proportion, or that have used it already. No, they're using barbaric shit like five G and inoculations, and they use the news media to sell this shit to an ignorant public that doesn't have the time or the resources to or the inclination. Eh, well, you know what? Ah, I don't know. Um, hmm. I would assume if somebody's kid got sick because of an inoculation, they would raise fucking shit about it and go nuts. And how little of that do you see? Most of the stuff is, buy our pill, it'll make you hard for 12 hours. But I've got a broken finger. Oh, oh well, you'll like this anyway. Go away. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like the conversation I was having with my uncle yesterday. I went over to clean his house and 
five hours later, and I didn't spend all that time cleaning. He just wanted to talk. And, but he was telling me about he's had a flu shot every year for, I think, 30 years. And I looked at him and I said, you know, they got the wrong strain for the flu shot. Cause he, and the reason we even got on that is because he volunteered at the, at the flu shot clinic that in town where they were giving free flu shots. Right. And apparently they gave out like 80 some flu shots. And I thought, Oh, good Lord. What can these and, people be thinking is in the thing that they don't understand it's the, the problem is the shot. <laughs> well, and see, that's what he was saying. He said the very first time he got a flu shot, his arm was numb, as in paralyzed numb, mm. for three days after he got his flu shot. Wow. And I said, then why did you ever go back for another flu shot? Well, because they told me that what they did was they screwed up and they gave me three times the amount. And I said, well, then you can go three years without a flu shot, right? Well, no, but it did make my – it paralyzed my arm for three days. Why would you go back? What did he tell you? Well, he said, well, because the doctor said, oh, just go get the flu shot. It'll be good for you. And I thought, oh, <coughs> dear <coughs> Lord. Oh, dear Lord. Well, uh, me and Cirque were watching this TV program earlier today about uh, <coughs> something about – uh a clinical trial in a medicine business that made people do very sick things, like murder and whatnot. And uh, they're making a TV show as a entertainment source. See, this is entertainment. This isn't real. Is the feeling I get from it? Not well. It's a desensitizing process, is what it is. But you really, can go on. Well, no, you go ahead and explain that part. I, Desensitize. I mean, uh, this is beyond. I think it's beyond my scope of really understanding because I'm not insane. No, but if you look at a lot of the TV shows anymore, and yeah. I have to admit, I got Netflix yeah, and I got yeah. Amazon Prime, yeah. and a lot of times I gravitate towards the crime shows. Now, mm -hmm. I like the old, the British detective kind of stuff, but, um, you know, you, I like to watch the crime shows and. Crime crime shows and comedies, that's pretty much where I, I hover on either one of those. But, you know, you, you watch enough of those crime shows and they show you these gory details and all of these dead bodies and all this other fun stuff. And I noticed it myself. It's like, holy crap, I'm sitting here for entertainment watching a crime show where they just shot up a room full of people and they're doing close-ups on all of these bloody body parts and crap. <laughs> And yep. I'm watching it for entertainment. It is a desensitizing <coughs> thing. It gets you to where when you see that stuff, it's it's no longer real. You think it's just TV. And I know my grandkids do that. You know, they'll see something and they'll see somebody get shot in a TV show. Uh -huh. And then they'll see a movie later on where that same person is playing a different character. And they'll go, oh, he just died in that other TV show. That's not real. And I'm like, they're losing the whole concept of dying and killing people. Yeah, that must be where I'm at. Because Sir gets, she'll watch the same shit that I'll watch. And I'm just, you know, like, eh, it's a TV, movie, blah, blah. It's not real. I know that. It's make-believe. Yeah. performing for me as a entertainment. But, yeah, sometimes she goes, wow, you're entertained by that, you sick bastard. She don't say it out loud, but it's in her tone. And she, yeah. she can't, she can't do it. It makes her emotional. And I'm thinking, then we're having this conversation about this particular topic. I see how it applies to me and my personal business. Mm -hmm. And I just thought I'd tell everybody about it, you know, because we're, we're all, I don't think we're all wired the same. I think maybe we've been conned into this, you, this similarity, and then lately, this push with the government to everybody be a fag and drag queen and all this horse shit. Now it's, well, we were wrong. <laughs> no, you, yeah. weren't, you weren't wrong. No. It's the individual that it matters to. So, you know, as long as you group a bunch of weirdos together, you're going to have a bigger weirdo to the guy that doesn't agree. See, like, I'm the outsider on taxes. 
I think taxation is theft. You know, I did. Mm-hmm. You don't got no right to nothing I have, motherfucker. And they go, but we have jails. And I went, well, then I just won't work. What are you going to do to somebody that don't work? Yeah. See, well, now in the personal realm, that that's where your social problems come in. Because other people are so much in everybody else's shit around them. They all want to know where you work and what you do for a living. And how did you buy your house? And how, what? Where did you get the car you drive? None of your fucking business where I got any of this shit. Why are you asking? Is my mind goes right to, you know, is there any fucking privacy in this life at all? I had to go um, where people don't speak the language I speak to get some privacy in public. And still, they'll find a fucking guy that speaks English enough to go, Hey, where do you work? <laughs> None of your fucking business where I work. That's where I work. How do you like that? <laughs> and you know what people don't like? What? The truth. Especially yeah. if you are uh, stand up for yourself and you're harsh. and you're, you know. So, you know, you're forced to do in public situations, avoid or misdirect. Because the truth will get you in fucking trouble Unless you're part of the game. And I'm obviously not in this fucking game just by my appearance, for crying out loud. Mm, you know, and sometimes it's, I think it, that's part of the delivery. Okay, well, I've been alive long enough to know that. If I wear a suit with short hair, or I'm old and got long hair, I get the same fucking result. It doesn't matter. People treat me the same. Yeah. I don't I don't have that chameleon thing. I'm just me. No matter what, people get they they want more than I'm willing to give most of the time. And how there is no nice way to tell people, "Hey, butt out of my fucking business. You don't know me well enough to talk to me like this because society's changed." Back in the day, a guy would say, "Hey, who'd you vote for?" Hey, what the fuck are you asking me that for, man? That's not your business. Now, it's like a badge. You wear in front of other people who you voted for, who you support. It was different when I was growing into it than it became when I was old enough to do it. See, and I know just enough people that lie about who they voted for, depending on who they're with. <laughs> but it's like, Wow. I can tell by your actions and your reactions to other people's comments that you're lying about who you voted for. But, hey, that's that's all on you. Because my Uncle Tommy asked me who I voted for the last election, and I said, I wrote in me. And he said, there's not a place to write in. And I said, I don't care. I wrote it in anyway. Hmm. I didn't fill in a circle. I wrote in. <laughs> me. Yeah, well, there's just not, not, not enough of us uh, rebels out there in the world, you know, because – there's so many rules and regulations. There's problems. If, if I was living in a, in a house with a family in California, my behavior had to be, at least the appearance had to be a certain way to maintain in the society. Because, you know, um, people have an underlying ex- expectation of neighbor, depending on the price of the house you live in. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, and that's that's all part of that keeping up with the Joneses well, bullshit. That it, I think was actually Freud's nephew that started all that. I'm leaning that towards the, the overcrowding it is so bad on people, but they they condition us to accept it for so long that by the time you realize, wait a minute, nah, this is not how people live. It's too late. The city either got you or it didn't, and if it's got you, it won't ever let you go. It's a, it's like a it's like an addiction I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I say that from doing it, from experiencing and then living the lifestyle and multiple different kinds of lifestyles. You know, I did this in this town, but in the other town I did something else. So to society I had a different appearance. You know, in one place I was an artist, in another place I was unloading trucks. In another place I was helping a uh, Helping a guy cut trees down, you know, shit like that. Whatever the, or maybe I was a tile setter. <laughs> or that month I was a house painter. It just depended on where I went. And the weird part about it is people 
behave towards you depending on what kind of position you hold in the employment world, in the drinking establishments. See? Mm -hmm. If you have no physical means of support, they want to know why not. What are you, some kind of crook? You sailing hair on? <laughs> Got any guns? <laughs> See, and I think, uh, does that just kind of apply to big city stuff? Because, once again, my boonies is showing, but... Um, I would out say here, it's so. Yeah, you know, there's an yeah. awful lot of people that are that are. Um, <laughs> kind of, I guess you'd say freelance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, up the they're jacks of all trades yeah. kind of stuff, and so it's not really unusual to be around someone that doesn't have a steady job or occupation. And I don't know. I guess I look at it weird compared to a lot of polite society, but. Man, oh man, you got to take care of those people that clean up after you, those oh, people sorry. that come in and, and take out the trash, the ones that that bust tables, so the person that brings you your food at a restaurant. You know, a lot of times the cook is, he's a chef, or, you know, you have all this other highfalutin, fancy schmancy stuff. But my God, I don't care how wonderful that food is. If you've got a crappy waitress or the table is dirty, that food ain't going to taste nearly as good. Your your body takes in an awful lot more than than what you realize. And I've always been, thank you ever so much. You did a wonderful job or, you know, stuff. Because the people that do those little jobs, those those tedious, nobody wants to have because you can't, although most of the people that are doing them nowadays have a college degree, hmm. but, um, you know, you don't have to have a college degree in order to bust tables. No, but most of you do. <coughs> you can't find anything in human studies or whatever the hell. Well, frickin all that was manufactured for our you know, entertainment. Oh, it, yeah. It's not necessary. Yeah. Labor is a thing of the past. And uh, outside of your own personal home, I mean, whatever financial labor, you know, it's all, what am I trying to say here? We're being manipulated because they can manipulate us. That if they couldn't do it, they wouldn't. They would try and fail, but they can, so they do. And instead of recognizing, hey, wait a minute here, I think I'm being tricked by the government. What people will do is just go along with it. And I've met people like that in my life. I'm not just saying I've heard about them. I've lived with them. I'm related to them. And mm -hmm. people that are so strict by the fucking book, you want to take the book and shove it up their ass. But they're there. And they're everywhere. And there's, there's more and more and more weirdos than there are um, enforcers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The weirdos are outnumbering the enforcement huge, but the the weirdos are so busy fighting each other that the, they're easy to maintain. They just let them kill each other off, and we'll just encircle them. <laughs> oh, yeah. They won't get divide. it. Yeah. And they're doing yeah, it in big, conquer. big cities, Portland, Paris. Now, who's financing all this violence? Because you got to think about how many people are willing to, to get up on whatever day of the week and go to a riot. You know, people that work down at Bank of America, you think, hey, I'm, hey, Johnny, I'm taking the day off. I'm going to go to the riot. No, these are the people that don't have any money. So who's paying them? Good question. And, and wow. Common sense. And that, how can you live? You how can what you, kind but, of person? Mary. How can you just be a professional protester? Beyond you know, all that, fun. how can you just exist in life right now without a bill in your pocket, at least, so you could eat and have a buy, buy a couple beers? It's not a lot of money anymore. Hundred bucks is nothing. I remember when I had a twenty dollar bill and I was freaking loaded. I'd last all weekend, and the people thought I overspent. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. I can remember. Now, yeah, I remember right. those days now, where, you know, I remember the days when you'd go to the grocery store with a twenty dollar bill and, and walk change. out with two full bags of groceries <laughs> and change, and yeah. refundable bottles to give to the kids. Yeah. Well, what I'm getting at, I kind of straight off uh, a little bit there, but it'll come back or it won't. I've been smoking my pipe, so I get a little windy. There you That's go. That's okay. And but I jump, I jump ideas because I've got so many different things. Oh, here we go. Uh, it costs so much today just to exist in life. You got apartment rent, you got uh, electricity, water, sewage, blah blah blah, food, incidentals, clothes, all these things. And if you live in a city, all these things cost a shitload more than they do in a place that's smaller, right? Mm -hmm. In in where we're from. So where does where does this group of a thousand guys, they're all just laying around on video games in their mom's basement and go, hey, you guys want to go to the riot? Because working people can't do that. You, you get fucked. You lose your job. <laughs> Some people yep. would lose their relationships or their children. So where where does the manpower come from? How is it organized? Huh? Think about it. the amount of money it takes. To mobilize a thousand people to go have them fight each other in the street. And how much planning and work in their childhood was spent getting them to be fucked up like that so they do these sick things. See, and that's that's that whole I think that's that whole education system and people people buying into the public education system and thinking, oh, someone else is going to teach my kids now so I don't have to. Hmm. It's And the public education system doesn't teach you how to think. It teaches you what, what to think. Yeah, it what wants to. you in these little cookie-cutter molds. Well, you, I mean, you did it, Christmas, though. I yeah. about freaked yeah. two – was it two, two summers ago hmm. – um, taken my other granddaughter uh -oh. uh, out to visit the grandkids in Colorado and she was telling me she was getting ready to start high school and they were already figuring out her career path Wow! and started getting her to start taking cl extra classes over and above the regular classes in school for her career path at 16 and I looked at her and I said my god how old my oldest daughter did not you know she didn't have a she thought she wanted to be a teacher until she started college. <laughs> and that first semester pretty much broke her of that. But, yeah, and I'm thinking, God, child, you haven't even started high school. And they're already doing career training with you. Yeah. That is ridiculous. At 13, wow. you're going to know what you want to be for the rest of your life? Hell, I don't know what I want to be for the rest of my life except for me. Yeah. Well, one thing I think I've learned to this day is the uh, one of the greatest indoctrination tools that the system has, the concept of contract. Something or something. But oh, yeah. the thing, well, but the way a contract works is you got to perform the service before you get paid. You don't get paid and then go do the job. That that what? <laughs> I just gave you all my money. Oh, you didn't give me anything. What are you talking about? Sport, and hence the contract is born. See, ah, but see, doctors, and it didn't used to be this way, but doctors now get paid before you get better. And if you don't get better, you have to go back and you have to pay them some more. Yeah, it should be and the other way around. Still, yeah. if you don't get better, you still have to go back and then you pay them some more. <laughs> they call this nut shit capitalism, and it's not, it is taking advantage of people's emotions and and. Forcing them by law most of the time now to be responsible and do this or we'll fine you. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, when did I become a slave to your organization? You know, Obamacare. I was being specific without naming the prick, but Obamacare was a massacre. Oh yeah, Obamacare was. Obamacare did exactly what it was intended to do, and it was yeah. written by insurance companies. Yep. And Big Pharma. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm curious. I have this distrust. My wife works in insurance, okay? But mm -hmm. yeah, the good side of it, she she's Danish and doesn't do it in America. So, 
I have to look around my surroundings to reevaluate my judgment of insurance because it's what she does. And what I've come to the decision about in the long run isn't got nothing to do with really the, the job itself or what it does or how it works. It's when people are, uh, there's too many of us in one place. We're not responsible anymore because that there's the crowd takes you out of it somehow in a level I can't define in words. I've been trying for years, but I've got all these strange notions about the bigger the crowd, the worse off you are. And other people don't agree with me. They think, well, 60 million people want Trump to be the president. Yeah, well, 30 million of them want to suck on a dick, too. They got their own. So nah, I'm not impressed. You know what I mean? The, you know, the, the many quality. Of those 60 million people really wanted Trump to be president, or they really did not want Shitlery to be president. Maybe we're just being that lied was one of the to. Discussions my, my uncle and I had yesterday. We talked about a lot of crap. Yeah, but maybe we're being lied to, Mary. He didn't necessarily vote for Trump, he voted against Hillary. Right. And um, I went, well, yeah, I get yeah, that. I voted for me. <laughs> not voting. All right. But see, technically, if you look at this, it's a circle we're in. And no matter how you play it, you're you're still playing it. Even if you abstain by not voting, you're still participating in their imaginary little game because the other people believe it. You know, oh, if, yeah. if 100,000 people got together in one place at one time and said no, just once to something, then people would listen. But they don't do that. They, they do what we do, little pockets of 40 Scattered all over the globe. Some of us don't even in, aren't even in the same room. Some of us aren't even in the same town. <laughs> so y your peer level is it's so minuscule. It's very strange. Yeah. Well. Hmm. And then sometimes uh, the most unlikely people that you meet are the ones that think the most like you, but they live in society and they have to. Be silent about how they feel about certain ideas. See, and that's just that's just really sad. That's really. I think the worst censorship in the world is the self censorship. You know, people that are. I'm afraid that somebody will look at me weird, yeah. or I'm afraid that you know, and it's all based on fear. I'm afraid that. They won't like me anymore. And I have to admit, the reason I have such an insight on this, at least my personal perspective, is because I did that for a lot of years. I shut down. Hell, I got told by – I know Cake says it's more respectful to say first, but I've only been married once, so my first husband, whatever. He's my ex now. I am no longer married to him. In any case um, – he did not like me talking about stuff like this because it made him feel dumb. And his words, you make me feel dumb because you're so smart and you're just flaunting your smartness. And I, wow. so I quit talking about stuff, wow. you know, and I quit because it just made things. No, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But strange how uh, other people see you and you don't see yourself in that light. Because I've been called both intelligent and stupid by pe many people have voiced an uh -huh. opinion. And depending on the situation at the time, sometimes they were right. I did a lot of stupid shit to get where I'm at now. I made a lot of mistakes. But that was because I was willing to go out there and do things and not sit back and rely on the word of the storyteller for entertainment. I wanted my own kick. So I'd go out there in the world and do shit. And other people would be satisfied with me coming into town and telling them where I've been, what I've been doing. That was their excitement. Oh, you went where and what? And what did it look like? Because they were, they wanted to be where they were. But they liked yeah. the, they liked the entertainment value of the story about, well, you hitchhiked where and you did what? And the people I've met along the road as a result of all the uh, weird stuff I've uh, just decided to go do. Oh, yeah. Well, people live vicariously through others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've not been one of them, and now that I'm settled, I, I don't feel like I'm one of them now. I don't give a shit about the world at all. 
I'm completely uh, satisfied with what I see around me is okay. So until bombs start falling here, eh, does that, I mean, can you recognize that in your own, in your own homestead there in Kansas where you get, just got that comfort about you don't spend all your awake time worrying about what the government's going to do or, oh, the violence or, oh, the this or, oh, the that. I have to read that on the Internet to be involved in it. I don't really worry and stew about it. You know, it's one of those one of those things where, and I had this explained to me because I used to. I admit, I used to. And I do try and explain to some people, you know, if you put yourself in their shoes, think about it here, dude. But, you know, if it's not going on right in front of me, that's when I will start worrying about it and do it, actually doing something here. But, you know, if it's something going on in Syria, how do I know that that something is really going on in Syria? Is this just a bullshit story that the MSM is putting out, or is it really happening? If it really is happening, I will, because I know thoughts are energy, so I will put out positive thoughts, positive energy, loving stuff to, to try and settle this stuff down, but... Other than that, there really isn't a shitload that I can do in Kansas that will stop a damn thing in Syria other than trying to be a better person here and Where hoping that at. that radi yeah. out, radiates yeah. out to the energy of collective energy of the world. And I know that sounds very hippie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Old, but, you know, old we, school. We all yeah. basically, you know, you can walk into a room and you can get the vibe of the room just oh, yeah. walking into the room. Yeah. So why is it so weird to think that you can get the vibe of the world just by, you know, standing out in the world and kind of relaxing I can, and I can, yourself up? I can give you an opinion on this, too. I think it's because to the individual, the world has been made so big. The universe, oh, Mars, and Pluto, and Uranus, and all this shit. That, yeah, that's where the Klingon circle is, Uranus. <laughs> okay, but it's all this, all this shit way the fuck out there somewhere where I am never going to fucking ever go in a billion lifetimes. So I've, I've decided for me that that time that I don't spend thinking about you know, alien spaceships landing and taking us over and all this other crazy crap we, we entertain ourselves with. Uh -huh. If I don't take that to a level of reality where I actually believe it's true, see, you called it mm -hmm. desensitized. And I just call the way that an individual can look at the reality around him is not as complicated as they make all the shit look. It's very simple. If you're, oh, ha yeah. if you're having a shitty day, there's a 98% chance you're a piece of shit. And 2% chance that somebody did something to you. Maybe 2%. 2 out of 100 victims. And the rest of them are just a bunch of babies whining because they didn't get their fucking way. And I try not yeah. to do that. I never complain. I always got the, I've got a good life. No matter what. Because I'm alive. That's it. My requirement is so minimal. Hey, the dark cakes knows me. He he spent a little time. We spent a little time chatting. And uh, uh -huh. yeah. And as far as advice to give another man, I told him. I said, "You already know all the fucking answers you need to know. You just haven't got there yet." <laughs> it it unfolds. Life is like that, man. You just got to do it. Now, other people yeah. can't tell you what something is. They can say, hey, I think it's like this, and I see it this way, and it looks blue to me, but the other guy might be colorblind and not know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. So, life experience has given me a sense of patience in my mind that I can't communicate on the radio just yet. Because me and Vinny were at it yesterday, and he, I've, he's got such a great idea about all this stuff. You know, the law. And he's devout. He wants the right and all this kind of shit. And I'm like, uh, I don't believe in any of this crap. Leave me the fuck alone. I leave you alone. That's how I live. But we've got these cop enforcement people. And me and Vinny were arguing about this link I saw where people were saying, I don't answer questions. And the cop would say, thank you and leave. 
My thing is, what led up to that part? Or was that the actual conversation? Did, did you see John Doe do this? I don't answer questions. Okay. Because there has to be a sense. And, but then he starts bringing up the violent cops and all that. Well, it's circumstantial. It's situational is what he was trying to tell me. It depends on the circumstances. But he was so angry about the topic and we're yelling and getting crazy that it, it seemed as though it got lost in the argument. And I wanted to bring it back up to make a, a statement out of it. It's situational. It depends on what it, it's like anything else. You can cook a meal a uh, hundred times and maybe one time you'll forget to put salt in it or something, some little detail. Mm -hmm. Because we're not, like you said, one, we're not perfect. There you go. But each encounter with the law is situational and it's different than everybody else's. Well, they're still, they're trying to find this one size fits all mentality to get us, you know, to, uh, to see the law with it, just a little bit of lightheartedness. Not to hate them, like Grim does, or Rob does, or mm -hmm. for the most part I do, but I don't think Vinny does. Well, it's because just because they're wearing a certain uniform doesn't necessarily mean that they themselves are a bad person. It does to me. Some Wait a minute. It does to me. I think exactly that. I see a uniform, and I want to go the other fucking way. Well, and I understand that, and I do as well, but... Why? Why? There's... Just because there's something about that uniform that gives off a bad vibe. Mm -hmm. But I do know some people that are in, quote, unquote, law enforcement that are really pretty decent people. And they're trying to make things better. And you can tell when when they've had a day where they have just bashed their head against that brick wall. And mm -hmm. but they're not. They're not what you would call order followers, you know, the <laughs> blind little order followers. They're yeah. more, they are more common sense, you know, and they're just trying to actually keep the peace and help work things out it, with the least amount. See, and, and I tease them about being lazy. And yeah, you just don't want to do the paperwork, which they don't. And there's a shitload of paperwork to that kind of crap. But they don't want to have to do the paperwork, so they try and smooth things over and try and work things out without having to do any paperwork. <laughs> I get that. I understand that. They happen to wear a certain uniform, but they also understand that that uniform has a very negative vibe to it and that they are being judged by the actions of others that are wearing a very similar uniform. So... Well, isn't mainstream news sources and such still getting quite a bit of attention of the, from the public, the general public, the working class, and all that kind oh, of yeah. crap? Yeah. So their their input is limited. Then they're not hearing everybody's uh, opinion. They're hearing one side of it. So yeah. I mean, well, how do you control people? I've never been so. Hmm. I'm just not like a lot of people, I guess. I don't know. It seems so alien to me to be in a in a thinking process that's so restricted, you know? Can't you can't you give things uh, just a little personal thought just because 27 people tell you that uh Pluto's the so and so's planet of the so what? Who cares? It's important to the person telling you. Just like if I'm going to tell you uh this is blue that's important to me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but mm -hmm. uh, why do we? Why are we indoctrinated to react to other people's opinions about shit we say and get so fucked up about it? <laughs> it's insane. We we should get we along all better than be we do. Accepted. Yeah, but we who uh, okay, we are and but, how we see things. Miss Mary, I believe yeah. we as grown ups in the first fucking place. Mm -hmm. Should be able to get along much better than we do, and I'm one of the I'm one of the worst pricks there are because I'm always fucking with Hansel. So, what you know, I'm not saying that uh, it the world should be perfect. I'm just saying this shit exists in life. So somehow yeah. you got to find a way for yourself that's comfortable to get through it. And if you're feeling the friction of uh, words, 
I do it all the time. And when I do, I just ignore them. It's got, I, I read something and it affects my mind somehow. So, hey, wait a minute. That's going too far. Fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's setting boundaries and not allowing those boundaries to be crossed. Okay. So the reality of the thing, when I found, figured it out, is I used to uh, ignore Hansel because his shit would just annoy me. And I get all pissed off at that. And then a couple months back, I stopped ignoring him. And sometimes I read his stuff and sometimes I don't, but I realized something at that time. And if I don't really like you, you're not worth being ignored. So the people that I do have on Ignore at this time right now, I kind of like them, but I don't like the way they speak. So because I've got this freedom to do, ignore them, I use it. And it I don't know if it improves the fucking quality of my time on on line from the other people's perspective, but I don't have to be uh, personally insulted by shit that doesn't have anything to do with me in the first place. But for some reason, the way one person communicates, other people react to it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like Goober. Goober's been having problems being mean with Moose and this, that, and the other. And uh, I... Sometimes don't get along with Goober. It depends on, on his mood, I think. I'm always the same nasty, sarcastic prick. I am not a sweetheart to anyone. So, meh. But I'm not particularly rude to everybody. I'm particularly rude to particularly a few people. And what I've, what I've come to realize is that uh, when I'm willing to ignore you, at least I'm... See, I had it backwards. I thought ignoring people was cutting them off. No, it's when, when you can look right at their text and not even give a fuck what they said. You go, wow, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, well, I finally hit that with Hans about a week ago. I went, ah, who gives a fuck? But he's such a rude. I was taught to, you know, uh, hmm, be concerned about how people interpret me to a point. You know, you don't want to, yeah. it, like they're talking about in the chat about taking a bath. Well, you know, there's taking a mental bath, too. And I'm not using, yeah, I'm not talking about using the word fuck too much or any of that horse shit. I'm talking about the personal attack to a, on another person, because I do it, I'm just as guilty as a next fucker. I'm just saying, to recognize it as being a wrong behavior takes a lot of fucking work, because I was indoctrinated to be a fucking maniac. By a maniac. Yeah. So for me to be married to a Danish woman and have a little home and dog and a cat is alien. It's the exact opposite of how I was raised. My future was not going to be what it ended up to be. My whole life has just been resisting the direction these fuckers wanted me to go in and getting in a little bit of trouble here and there along the way. But overall, it's been a really good time. Yeah. Uh, I don't have half the anger that some of these other people do. You know, because they pay taxes and they work and they support illegal aliens and all these fantasies they have in their head from reading stories on the Internet. Because if nobody ever told you, you wouldn't know these things. These are things people got to bring to you and shove down your throat and go, see, you hate these people. See, you hate them. But it's not the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm seeing a shitload of of that stuff, and it's like, oh, you see, it, it, I know. I yeah. really, I really am to the point where, man, where mm-hmm. you focus, you're going to start seeing more and more of, and <laughs> and what you put out, you're going to start getting back more and more of, and and when people start going, hate the Jews, it's the Jews that are bad. Okay, mm-hmm. is it the Jews or is it some individuals that are wearing that mask? Mm-hmm. And do you want to hate the whole bunch, and yet you say, stop stereotyping, stop being racist, stop being this, stop being that. Do you say Which that crap? Which my uncle wait, told wait, me wait, I was a racist, wait. too, you, yesterday, and I said, I am not. I don't run. Do you say that? <laughs> yeah, but do you say that crap to other people, or do you just get called it? Or do you use it yourself? What's that? Telling people? That, whatever. Yeah, they're racist or they're anti, oh, whatever the fuck you call I don't even know. I don't do it. I might do it on the internet, but I don't do it. Real life is way different than internet life. 
Yeah, I've been called racist before in real life, too. Wow. And I've looked at them and say, how am I racist? I don't have a thing against any human. Oh, I do. You know, unless that do. human does something directly to oh, me, you left I don't give a out. shit what color they are. Oh, okay. That's better, because I, I got a few problems with people, but I don't think that they're uh, important. They don't really value, there's no value to them. It's just time to, uh, you can choose any direction to go with your time to do whatever the hell you want to do. So, if I'm wasting my time arguing with somebody on a TV screen, it's got to be because I want to do it. But what I don't get is, why would I want to do that? So I'm starting to see the reality of it. Is I don't. I'm just jumping on the dog pile. So I got to separate one more time. I got to separate from the you know the cluster fuck that I've always bitched about my whole fucking life, and I got to go walk over there and stand alone and be pointed at by everybody else because I won't join them. But they're doing it wrong, and they don't see it because they're the ones doing it wrong. I feel, probably as they do. I'm doing it right. What's wrong with you fuckers? <laughs> That's what's where we're at. The individual, it comes out in that area in life. And, but you're joining a cluster to be part of a cluster. Fuck you, moron. So what's the point? You're defeating yourself by joining. The individual yeah. is, the, man, it's the best thing. You get a partner maybe. But hmm. there's nothing in life that is more fulfilling and this is going to sound strange, than to owe nobody anything and have nothing and not be responsible to or for anything. Just be alive. And I did that for years. <laughs> I have a few relationships, and of course, along the way, but there was long periods of time where I was fucking around having a good time in life. Didn't give a shit where I was, what I had, who, who I owed money to, if I owed money to anybody. Didn't, nothing mattered. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, to the point of where it, it uh, affected me in any kind of way. You know, it, life was just good. People were nice. It was a different world. This is back in the seventies, and mm -hmm. now, now today, I look around. I seen a movie with Cirque uh, called Rattlesnake. Yeah, special effects. The story is kind of clever, but they get bit by a rattlesnake, and I'm thinking, well, you know. How dumb do you have to be to let your five-year-old wander off into a, a desert alone? <laughs> so, you know, it starts out with a stupid idea, you know, but then they get bit by a rattlesnake. And the only one person I know on the uh, RLM that would have any idea physically would be Woody because he's been living in the desert. I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe Grimner, he lives, uh, I don't know how desert-like where he's at in uh, New Mexico is. I would say being as he's growing uh, vegetables, it's, a, it's probably not that bad. Well, we have rattlesnakes here. Hmm. Well, they're, in, they're not indigenous to every place. They're, but the, I thought they liked the warmer climates, dry. Oh, oh I'll tell you what. We got plenty of them out here because they have a rattlesnake roundup. Well, um, then we got yeah, two, about probably Yeah, 30 too. miles west of here. And hmm. yeah. And well, then they have a big rattlesnake fry that mm -hmm. night with mm. all the rattlesnakes that they catch. What a weird topic, huh? Rattlesnakes. I know. But, it is. But I, and they are, man, every, I think every year someone out here gets bit. The things you know, that entertain us are just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and yep. the thing, well, what? When you stop and think about it, you know, there's so much in this world that, I don't I don't know. How can you how can you argue about little piddly things when there's so much out there to go, dude, seriously, how does that work? Or and and I I get it that I'm I'm more inclined like that than and I can't expect everyone else to be that way, but it's still it just amazes me sometimes how people can get so wrapped up and so angry and so wanna pick a fight over anything when all you have to do is just okay calm down and look around you and watch that squirrel run across that telephone line or watch those 
baby birds up in that nest or check out all those damn butterflies over there. Holy <laughs> crap, where'd they come from? You know, there's so much in this world that you can you can look at and, and either go, oh, God, that's ew, or De- depend- wow, that's kind of cool. Depending on your surroundings. Dear. Well, d- you know, even in the city, of course, See, yeah. I am uh, a, a little local yokel, are you but sure? even in the city, I yeah. walk around in the city and my children pretty much say, we're not with her. Because I do. I'm, I'm one of those touristy kind of, whoa, that's a huge ass building. You're the or Barney Five. Oh, yeah. I make eye contact and I smile at them and my kids keep telling me, you shouldn't do that in the city. Why not? Really? You know, maybe if more people made eye contact and smiled at each other, the city wouldn't be such a scary place. Yeah, that's what we do here, pretty much. Because, uh, duh, or not duh, uh, I'm Lone Frog. Yeah, Frog, I've been doing this show for a long time, and I've made my stand on the strong community thing. It's got to be small. That's the whole premise of it. The bigger things get, the worse they work. You can't manage it. Uh, over 150 people, you pretty much got a nightmare. You can't remember 150 people's first fucking names. I don't. I don't know how you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know you'd have to have a memory like a damn uh, bartender. Yeah. And some yeah. of them are really man. These people are freaking good. They can remember five, six, seven, eight drinks, different drinks, and. Know what amount of what to put in each glass and all that, but that's their art. That's what they're good at. And somehow the, the system we live in made alcohol and, uh, wow, and made it part of our entertainment system. And it really, it's the most destructive fucking thing I've ever used. And I've used, a, well, I've used about all the bad stuff that you can think of except for uh, uh, speed. I'm not a big, I never did like speed, any kind of uh, crank or any of that horse shit. I, I, yeah. I tried white crosses once. Nah, not never that, again. Well, never again. see, and that goes back to the 70s, white crosses. But they had shit in the 70s that was insane. Quaaludes. Oh, good Lord. There was a period of time, too, where the uh, state of California was putting, and they were teamed up with the Mexicans. And I don't know if this is, this is ever true. But I remember the stories being printed so we'd read them about they were spraying the freaking weed crops, whatever crops were supposed to be, with Paraquat. And I thought, wow. So instead of just finding it and destroying it, now they're going to poison it and then let the fucking smugglers smuggle it and everybody makes their dollar off it and it's poisoned on the on the buyer's end. And I thought. They did the same thing with alcohol during Prohibition. Okay, now, we read that they did it. How do we freaking know they really... Maybe the threat or the past tense threat of having done it was all they needed. It, the well, the Germans true. did this shit through uh, World War II that, on their own people. and they've All these experiments were done and then moved to uh, America after the war by all the oh, people yeah. that were doing them in Germany and Europe. Now they, then they had America to play in all these years. <clears throat> wow. They've mm-hmm. messed with us in so many freaking ways that we know about that the ways that we just are you know, considering may be possible, other people aren't ready to even hear the stuff that we know about yet. They're, they're living in another planet. You know? I've harped on that damn Clinton thing a thousand times, but he was apologizing for experimenting on the public without their consent or knowledge. And people don't give a what. They could care less one way or the other. And well, people went, aw, see, he apologized, as opposed to, what the fuck, you did what to us, and you're apologizing now? <laughs> so they're still doing it. They, they never stopped doing it. That's what an apology is to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People, uh, you would apologize. Well, you know what, I'm probably going to do it again. So why bother? You know, you think you're never going to be pissed off at me again? You're living on another planet because that's the way we're designed. It's what we're created to do. Go out and create disaster and problems. Because if you've got an answer that works, people don't want to fucking hear it. They laugh at you. Tell them, want me to prove it to you? 
Well, it's it's that whole butt my roads thing. And I found, I found, and I think I shared it earlier this week in the chat, the historic route, uh, U.S. Route 6 mm. in Iowa, mm. where 10,000 farmers got together and built a highway or a road from one end of Iowa to the other in one hour. But my roads, mm-hmm. see, teamwork will do a whole hell of a lot more. But they, and whomever the leeches that be are that are, you know, running the show, that we allow to run the show, I have to put that out there. We allow it because we don't, we as a collective don't step up and say, screw you, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not hurting anybody yeah. over here. Get out of my face. Yeah. But yeah. you, you should know, never we have as to say a collective that. allow those those that think that they know what's best for the rest of us. Yeah. They can't even balance their own damn checkbook, but they know what's best for the rest of us. Yeah. You know, and, they know what's best. They okay. tell us what we should do. Wait, when we you can't. Mary, when you deal with your family, do do you uh-huh. do you ever discuss the fact that the, the economy is a fraud? That we're we're living on promises of tomorrow, every moment of your life is dependent on something getting paid tomorrow, never today. Because Yeah, it's what, a wimpy it's a wimpy uh, okay, economy. Right, yeah. right. But here's the thing what, what people don't understand about the creative accounting end of this shit is if they're exchanging all this crap on plastic cards and paper, what is really the point of it? I mean, outside of the illusion that you own a lot of shit and you have a lot of money, what is the point of the way we trade. Why Why couldn't you just exist and go to the thing and get your stuff and go back? I think eating and breathing and water are uh, life necessities. You can't live without them. Okay, yeah. You can live without medical care. You can live without driving cars. And you can live without tons of shit. But, you know, your health. Ooh. You can't live very long without your health. you got to take care of yourself, right? But uh-huh. we're all indoctrinated, and I got out of it, and that's why I brag about getting out of it, because I took a big risk. I could have been wrong and fucking killed myself. But it seemed to me at the time, the decision I made, I'd rather die than put up with this bullshit illness. That's nonsense. It's ma- they made it up. They made it up to sell me a pill. And you know what? You are talking about what um, it's uh, Ringing Cedars series, book seven, The Energy of Life. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Excuse me. I wanted to talk about this Tuesday, but things with mom came up. Well, let me say one thing to pancakes real quick. Hey, okay. I believe you, pancakes. I just can't do it. I get over. I I get over uh, overwhelmed around too many people. I don't. I don't care for it. Big crowds just make me uncomfortable. Three people is enough. Sometimes four, but eh. after four, I start looking for a place to hide. Oh, I see. Now you sound like my Uncle Tom. But I'm going to read you a little bit from this. Um, Thank you, Miss Mary. It's Chapter 14, Mm -hmm. and it's A Society of Schizophrenics. Ooh. Is there a link or what? Uh, no, this is this is okay. you have to buy right. the book. Oh. It's, um, Ringing Cedar, or go to the library and check it out. Ringing Cedar series, book seven, and these books, and that's what amazes me because this was printed in English. Um, <laughs> and let me look and see here. When was this? In English, it was um, two thousand seven, two thousand and eight. It was originally print. This book was originally printed in Russian, uh, which is where the author is from, in 2003. So this is a ways back. But he says that we all know that nature, or that in nature there are plants capable of treating all types of diseases of the body. And what we need to do is be a little bit more precise. In nature, there are plants capable of preventing diseases in the body. So why don't we have them available? And why under the whose influence have we chosen a way of life which destroys not only our bodies but our minds too? 
someone out there must be simply laughing at us, be fooling us into calling this way of life civilized besides. So if we use terms like civilized country and civilized society, meaning by this that the society of people which has achieved a certain and, of course, correct level of development, then this development should also be reflected in, among other things, questions pertaining to diet, and not just among other things, but first and foremost. But somehow along the way, we got, we bought a lie, is basically. So then he goes on to say, now let's pay a visit together to a typical food store in a supermarket, and you find many so-called civilized countries, whether it be in the West or in Russia, and the difference in produce isn't all that great. And we find that the majority of produce available is nicely packaged, has a long shelf life, and we find a whole lot of dried, frozen, and concentrated products, which can hardly be termed as fresh produce, yet we're sold it as fresh produce. Now, at the supermarket, we can also find so-called fresh vegetables, beautiful to look at, tomatoes and cucumbers and whatever. And yet it comes to light that these are all hybrids, specially cultivated varieties capable of preserving their good looks for a long time, but considerably inferior in quality to the normal natural variety. But we've bought into all of this because it has a longer shelf life. It's so much better for us. This is what civilization has brought to us. So, you know, the public has recognized that a majority of their number has been consuming produce that's harmful to their health because it is no longer the natural stuff that's been hybridized. And society is getting sicker with all of these new civilized ways of treating, you know, with medicine and proper eating and and processed foods, and yet society is getting sicker and sicker with all of this civilization. Mm -hmm. So we are living in a muddle-headed society. And that's, I didn't read it all verbatim, but it Basically, that's what he's getting across is that somewhere along the way, we got sold a bill of goods because it looked good. Didn't necessarily taste good. And I know going to the grocery store and buying tomatoes, they don't taste near as good as the tomatoes that I grow. Mm. But, you know, if I run out of tomatoes that I grew, then I go to the grocery store and I buy tomatoes. Same thing holds true for anything. That if I can grow it, it just plain tastes better than the stuff that's at the grocery store. And a lot of that is because the stuff at the grocery store wasn't allowed to complete the process of ripening on the vine. Mm. Because then it would not survive the trip, the transportation. Yeah. Yeah. Been there, done that. You know, it's just like homemade bread tastes so much better yeah. than store-bought bread. Yeah, I know. My wife used to bake bread before she broke her fingers walking the dog. Yeah. But, uh, she mangled her fingers really bad. I mean, it was bad. So, But she, before that, she used to bake a lot. Now, she's lazy see, now with her injury. Uh, See, and that's something, it reminded me of something I read several years back about a um, restaurant Hmm. that um, part of their advertising thing, and it was a little mom and pop restaurant, but their advertising thing was that um, there's always that extra added ingredient of love in whatever we serve you. Hmm. And somebody actually called, I don't know if it was the Food and Drug Administration or what, but they called some governmental agency and complained about that being listed on their advertisement or on their menus or whatever, wherever it was listed. And they had to take that off 
But what you don't realize is something that's made by someone that actually enjoys what they're doing is having a good time cooking this meal for you, hoping that you truly enjoy it. That tastes better than like a short order cook that I've been doing this for 20 years. Here, eat this slop. (laughs) One gives a shit, the other one doesn't. It shows in the give a shit. Yeah. Well, some people learn late like me, too. So uh, it's all a matter of uh, how you're living. You have, but that's all part of that civilized society. The civilized oh, definite, society yeah, has definitely. to become, yeah. you have to have a job and you have to make money and you have to yeah. do this. Yeah. Why not learn to grow your, and I know there's an awful lot of people in big cities that can't do this. But shit, if you got a window to your apartment, mm. you can grow you some produce. Well, yeah, but Cirque lived in an apartment when I met her, and she was a city-fied girl at that point. As far as I'm concerned, looking back on it, she, she's she been experimenting out here in the country, but uh, she was pretty much city-fied a few years and ago. And see, that's that whole civilized. So know, was I. Though, city-fied, right? you can't get your hands dirty. Ooh, well, why would you I, do that? No, I don't mean to get your hands dirty but i mean just no but you know, you know growing things and yeah oh, but i have yeah. to get my hands dirty no and I no, have to no, do this. no no i'm just saying just yeah. to be bothered to do it in the front you're living in an apartment in a city with a job yeah you're not gonna go home and go hey what can i plant in the window sills no you're probably partying and having a good time you're living your life yeah that's what a part because you're yeah. civilized but when and the, you're going to the grocery store and you're buying food that you think tastes good, but it tastes good because of all of the artificial bullshit that they put in it, as opposed to growing some of your own and realizing just how much better what you grew tasted. See, you country girls, I grew up in a city. I know what it's like to be ignorant about uh, that to a degree. I mean, in school, we had a, a patch of land out in the back. We had a big field. It was huge. You had to walk through this long field to get to the school, and the school owned all the property. So uh-huh. the teacher in my, I think I was in 10 years old, he had us garden this area. They had encased in a, some kind of chain link fence with a little shack in it. But all the mm-hmm. land around that had overgrown and it had weeds. So we cleared it all out. Then he had us, you know, hose and making rows, and we're going to plant this here and that there. And through the school year, we grew different vegetables and uh-huh. picked them up. Yeah, but they only did it that one year, and it never, never before that, and never after that. Okay. It came and went like a breeze. Yeah. We, we weren't yeah. encouraged to. Uh, Treat the land the way the land was supposed to be treated. We were citified. And yeah. now, okay, Ooh. so now, now I'm living. Mark Cake says Cherokee heirloom tomatoes. Wow. And <laughs> yeah. I grew Cherokee heirloom tomatoes last year and this year. And oh my goodness, they have such an amazing flavor to them. Ooh, you braggers. You are so good. Ooh, very good. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, we got our strengths here where we live too. And part of that is Cirque decided to, to start growing vegetables in the backyard. And we, we, over the years, we're, we're taking it a little more serious, we get older, get more busy instead of less. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, I yeah, know. It is weird. Mm-hmm. So between the two of us, we, we managed to get strawberries and uh, cucumbers and then uh, what else did she Tomatoes, yeah, shit like that. But this year, we, uh, boy, we had a wet August and it didn't do, we got flooded. Yeah. Yeah, but I saved a couple of the plants and I'm going to see if I can keep them alive through the, uh, through the season and then in the spring put them back in the ground. I don't know if they'll survive or not, but I want to give it a shot. Yeah. Well, and I did that with my, my ginger, I harvested one of my, because I did ginger in a container, <clears throat> and oh. I harvested some of it and took some up to Lisa B, because she's, she's had ginger before, but she's never had fresh homegrown ginger. Oh, so I, yeah. I took some up yeah. to her, and she was like, oh, this is just amazing. Yeah, yeah they have so a they have I, a lot of resources here for uh, organic. Yeah. They, yeah. Lab, they so, labeled it. All the products that are at the grocery. If you if you're doubting that your 
eating a GMO, it would say organic if you weren't. See, so you're you not, you know there you, you know that that's not your choice. Yeah. Now there is, and I think Rob Works knows about it as well. Uh, it's Bear Creek Seeds, and that's where I ordered. And they all the seeds that they sell Got a are link. heirloom seeds. Put a link up, and I'll throw it in the notes at the end of the show. Um, but that's where I got a lot of my seeds for uh, for my garden. And, I mean, we grew – well, actually, I made a big pot of soup um, the other day that we're still working on. Mm. But I put in onions that I grew and carrots. And I got carrots that, you know, some are purple, some are red, some are orange. But they're all heirloom. <laughs> um, it's just – Wow. And it just made the soup a lot more colorful. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, but I threw in the, same, the purple yeah. potatoes yeah. and the red potatoes. And it's just <laughs> the purple potatoes, the meat itself is also a purple color. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun to, to <coughs> take Sorry. stuff and just throw something together. And it's like, oh, and this is stuff that we grew. Yum. See, you that, got, yeah. And that's, that's a part of life that we're not all raised with. See, we're not all – that's not a part of everybody's day. The modern day is real. Everybody's plugged in and online and going somewhere. Going to get out of this hellhole and go to the city and be somebody. And shit, we all went through that at some point or another, some level of it. Mine was just getting the hell away from my family. but <laughs> They found hmm. me in the end anyway. What? I'm not finding it. What are you looking for? Maybe I need to. Uh oh, your list, your heirlooms. Because yeah, I know the Bear I, Creek seeds. Yeah, I know Grim Grim Hat was spoken about heirloom seeds. I don't know who else. I think Vincent a couple times. Vinny knows about plant shit. I think. Who else do we have, Red? We got my, metal pancakes, dork cakes. He knows. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of talented people on this internet. So that's what I was saying earlier. Like, give, me, give me a minute before I give you the close. And how's that? Give me two minutes, and, and then I'll I'll let you shut it all down. Okay. But, you know, we get along so badly with each other that it's it's ridiculous. You know, there you go. And I'm guilty of wow. it too. I just don't. I think it's. Uh, I think it's in. It's in this belief shit that we all share. It's not real. It's, it's crap. You wouldn't treat people like that nose to nose, and if you would, you probably spend a lot of time alone. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I don't know. I was. I'm sorry. I was trying to find. Oh, you're still looking you know, for the seeds. Yeah, and you know yeah. what? It wouldn't. It kept telling me no such, uh -oh. no such. Just like. Better grab all this shit. Baker, yeah. Baker Creek. I said it wrong. Tell okay. you something, too, is get a, a external hard drive and start storing shit on external hard drives because I believe that the interwebs is going to slowly over the future take away all the truth that, about all these things and we won't be able to find them. You have, have to copy them and keep them separate and give them to somebody else that's younger. Pass the message on. Yeah. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. you know, the other side of this coin is just an illusion to a few of us because a few of us have an understanding of it. And then the people that support it, they're depending on it. So they don't really understand it. They think they do, but nah. Take away their yeah. security blank. These people would cry if they had to go without a fucking couple meals. They'd snivel, I haven't eaten since 8 o'clock this morning. I'm starving. I mean, those kind of people. Give me a break. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I I work real hard, so to speak, in my daily life to support myself so that I'm not like that. I can go without plenty of things for periods of time without needing them. And, you know, it's like, wow. And I hear all these other people constantly whining about, this ain't right, that ain't right. Thanks for playing along, everybody. Take it away, Miss Mary. <laughs> Take it away, Miss Mary. What am I supposed to do now? Am I supposed to do some more of my ringing cedars? <laughs> you, 
what if you found a link, you could post that and I'll put it in the notes. I did. Show. It's okay. rareseeds.com. Right. There you go. That's, I wasn't that's the looking. Baker Creek. Okay. I'm um, opening, copying, and pasting now. But I thought if you want to say something cool for the end of the show, this dark table day, feel free. Okay, and I'll well, only interrupt to, you at the good parts. Back to the energy of life um, from the Ringing Cedars books. Uh, he goes on to say that we're told that we're constantly improving, but note. According to t statistics, the number of sick people is rising each year. Then along come new diseases, which mankind never had to grapple with before, including a whole lot of mental illness, not to mention the fashionable profession of psychotherapy. In other words, they find a new mental illness to give themselves job security. Then the question that resounds loud and clear What's behind the degradation and overall health of the civilized societies? Isn't the healthcare system itself at least partly to blame? And yes, it is at least partly to blame because you cannot make money off of customers that you cure. You cannot make money off of people that only come to you once in a while. And so you have to perpetuate and you have to come up with more diseases. Put that hyphen in there. And you have to come up with more conditions that need to be treated either by the medical system or the psychiatric system. And they keep coming up with more of this and more and more people start falling for it. Why? Because they've injected so many neurotoxins into our system via the food we eat or through the water we drink or the air we breathe or that little prick in the arm. We're getting all of these neurotoxins inundated on us. And if you go back and you, and you can't, you know, you don't have to do it all at once. You can gradually do it. Uh, you can grow herbs in your, gar in your apartment. You can get you one container and grow you a, pa a patio potato or tomato. You can grow potatoes in containers. There's lots of things, and that's what I did this year was experiment on different things that we could do in containers and different things that, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that if you have a window, you can grow at least one vegetable, possibly two, depending on how my brother David this last year grew tomatoes and peas all in the same container. They, they partner well. And the peas add nutrients that the tomatoes need, and the tomatoes add nutrients that the peas need, and they provide the peas with a place to climb. So, you know, if you can do just a little bit to start taking back care for yourself instead of having to go to someone else who is wearing a particular costume that you have been trained your whole life to believe that they are an authority on you, take back a little bit each year, and you would be surprised how much happier you will be and how much happier your surrounding will be. Okay, that's the end of my spiel. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't want you to not be fulfilled on this wonderful dork day. Because yes. at the last, hey, I thought you weren't going to make it, so I, I was going to cancel. I didn't want to do it alone. I didn't feel it. Yeah. I would like to argue with somebody that's alive, if you know what I mean. So, uh, if that's it, we'll say goodnight, Alice. Good night, Alice. And Gracie. And whoever else is listening. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs> See you in the funny papers. See you, love you, bye. <laughs>